Well, I, I've been doing uh, detailing on the side for like the last seven years or so. I really just fell in love with paint correction primarily and the difference in results that you could get with that. I really decided to niche down and really focus on the higher end market of detailing. And then when I came on to Owner's Pride, it really helped me to um, carry a higher end product that people can't just get on Amazon um, that has an actual warranty with it. Hey, Dan, it's time for Behind, Behind the, the Buffer. buffer. Welcome to Behind the Buffer, a presentation of the Owner's Pride podcast. I'm your host, Dan Williams, Dan E. Williams, and the E stands for Eco Wash, the drought tolerant, eco friendly way to wash your car with just a little bit of water. Use code Eco Wash the World at checkout on ownerspride.com. You're going to get 10% off your order, 10% off your entire order. Today, we have a special guest. And I always say it's a special guest, but you know what? It always is a special guest here, Mr. Matt Lightholt. Matt, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Dan. How are you? My goodness, my goodness. Pretty darn good, thank you. Pretty darn good indeed. Um, Matt, you joined us here at Owner's Pride less than a year ago. How's that experience been for you since joining up with Owner's Pride? Dan, it's been uh, really nice with the community of support. Um, it's been nice to have a dedicated rep. And uh, I really appreciate the warranties that Owner's Pride offers because it helps me to separate myself and our market with the ceramic coatings that we offer and uh, give our customers some great peace of mind that their coating will last a long time and be taken care of. Absolutely. That's one of our cornerstones. And you know what? You want to set up your business for the long haul. You do it right. And there you go. So the Owner's Pride podcast, or Behind the Buffer specifically, as you know, is very much going to be focused on you and your business journey. The first thing I like to do is jump into the Wayback Machine and go back to a much earlier time of life when Mr. Matt Lightholt was cleaning his very first car. Give me the memory that you have the very first time you can remember ever washing, detailing, touching, cleaning, doing anything to a car. This is your story. Let me have it. My mom had this Pontiac Grand Prix when I was a kid, probably eight years old. And I remember being out there with toothbrushes, cleaning out the vents and cracks and crevices. We were using armor all to shine up that dash. Looking back on it, I kind of cringe, but you know, we were just uh, doing the normal thing back then. And uh, as I got older, my dad had this 93 Ford Festiva. It was red and I believe it was single stage paint. And we used one of those giant like 12 inch buffers with the two handles on them, the cheap ones. and uh, every spring and fall, we would go out there and we would polish the car and um, wax it. And, and it sure looked like a million bucks afterwards uh, to our untrained eye. And uh, I kind of got interested in it and uh, detailing. Uh, later on, as an adult, I uh, found Ammo NYC with Larry Cosilla on YouTube and really fell in love with paint correction, watching him correct paint and just really transform the look and appeal of different cars. I had a 1995 Mazda uh, Miata M edition, and it's got this really deep purple, beautiful color. So I invested in some Rupes polishers and got to polishing that with uh, the, what I learned from watching Larry on YouTube and uh, really fell in love with the look of a vehicle after it's had some time put into it. And uh, it's really just looking phenomenal. So I, then had just spent twelve hundred plus dollars on polishers and thought I should probably pay for them. So started working on some friends' vehicles and eventually I uh, went into it full time a couple years ago and uh, specialize in ceramic coatings, paint protection film, and paint correction now. You're not a bunny. I'm not a frog. We should not jump ahead of ourselves because at this point we could just say, hey, and that's the Owner's Pride podcast. So let's dig in a little bit deeper and tell your story about the journey that got you to where you are before we get to where you're going to go. So it, that first car wash, it sounds like you were already fairly detailed. I mean, you were using brushes on the vents on the inside. It wasn't just your normal just washing the car off with some dish soap and a hose. So that's pretty darn interesting. How about um, your first car that you had? What was the first car that you got? And tell me a little bit about that feeling that you had when you sat down in the driver's seat for the first time. My first car was a 1996 Subaru Legacy Outback, and it's red. And I actually still have the car today. I uh, bought it when I was 16 and uh, 
paid for it cash with my own money that I made mowing lawns, and I was really proud of that. And uh, two days after I bought it, my friend and I uh, ripped out the whole entire interior of it and deep cleaned uh, the metal underneath the interior. We deep cleaned everything inside of there, and then I put in the Dynamat sound insulation. And uh, I was in high school, so I really liked stereos. So my goal was to sound insulate the heck out of that car so I could uh, listen to my tunes without upsetting my neighbors and uh, not having a bunch of rattles going on. And man, that car was uh, sure a sweet sound system. And put it all back together and uh, successfully had disassembled and reassembled my first interior at 16. And that uh, definitely paved the way for a much deeper interest in the uh, deep cleaning world, I suppose. Awesome, awesome. So you you said you were getting the money to do this originally as um, mowing grasses, which is an interesting point. You're an entrepreneur now. Sounds like you kind of got the bug at an early phase. Um, did you come from a family of entrepreneurs? So both my parents worked construction. We kind of grew up a uh, lower income. But uh, my mom was a tile installer. She was the first woman in the state of California to graduate the apprenticeship program. So that was pretty cool. And my dad was a drywall uh, taper and finisher. And they met building uh, the Coeur d'Alene Resort here in Idaho, which is our staple resort in our, in our town on the lake here. And uh, that's how I came along. But so, yes, they were both entrepreneurs, but they were both uh, single owner operator uh, businesses. So nothing big. But uh, I always had to work for everything that I wanted. So when I was eight years old, we started mowing lawns. My dad and I did. So every Friday, we'd go out there and we'd mow uh, probably 10 to 15 lawns in a little trailer park down the street. And uh, we did that for 10 years. I invested a lot of the money and put myself through school. And um, occasionally, I was able to buy a little little treat for myself. But um, typically, it was just to save up and invest and then... Um, I also had a couple of customers at my mom's house. My parents divorced when I was four, and I uh, took care of those customers. That was kind of my spending money, but I found a love for photography, which became a very expensive hobby <laughs> when I was uh, 14. So uh, between that and, and cars, I really had to work hard for the fun toys that I wanted, but I'm really glad for the experience of it. Okay. So thinking back to those days when you were getting your first customers that were your customers, not ones that your pop set up, but ones that you were going to, what were you, were you just going door to door, knocking on doors saying, Hey, can I mow your grass? Or how, how were you getting your customers back then? Yeah, I just went and knocked on doors and then word of mouth. It was a, a lot of older people in the trailer park. And so word actually spread pretty quickly. Um, I used to be known as the whiz kid because I would also help them with their VCRs and all that and getting their TV set up. So I was kind of like the neighborhood tech support kid and then also lawn mowing, but I would send invoices and everything. So I tried to keep it as professional as possible and uh, really just uh, provide a great service. And the word kind of grew. I kept it ju just that one trailer park though, because it made it really easy to just go house to house and not have to drive all over town. So that was really nice. Now, you said that you started getting into photography at 14 years old. So this is right when you got into high school. Did you participate in any clubs or, or sports or anything? Or did you just start becoming engrossed with your cars and, and photography? You know, I really wasn't much of a sports kid growing up. Um, Mom was a little restrictive on what I could uh, play, but uh, played a little sports as a younger kid, but didn't really find too much of a passion for it. I did find a passion for photography, so I had a teacher my freshman year and for a photography class that kind of helped mentor me a little bit and uh, keep me uh, on track, I suppose. But really, I was uh, mostly self-taught, and uh, I remember riding my book, riding my bike to Hastings one day, picking up a photography book by Scott Kelby, and it's the first time I'd ever wrote, written. Sorry, it's the first time I ever read a book. Uh, front to back and I went to Starbucks and I read that thing <laughs> couldn't put it down and uh, ended up connecting with the author later in my photography career and doing some guest blogs for him and stuff but um, he was definitely a big influence and then um, I remember on Christmas break when I just binge watched his uh, online training courses and <laughs> paid for a month of it and 
I don't think I did much besides watch those courses for the two weeks I was on break and I learned a lot and just really practiced the craft and started doing my first commercial campaign for a footwear company at 14 and so my first wedding at 14 and just kind of kept growing from there and I've been uh, doing it ever since and now it's more of a side business for me. This is my primary business, but I still really love it. Holy moly. So you were doing paid gigs at 14 years old when you had just started. Mm -hmm. um, how how did that come to be or what was it about you that was special? I mean, gosh, when I was 14 years old, nobody was hiring me to do anything, to tell you the truth. So what was it about you or, or the view that you had that made what you were doing unique enough to kind of get picked up by something like that? No, I think it was a stroke of luck. My my mom had a contact with this person that had started this European footwear company. And um, I don't know how it happened, but she said that uh, her son could do photography. So I ended up photographing their entire catalog of shoes and uh, did it in my living room with some, some whiteboard and uh, as a background and some uh, halogen work lights. And I made it work. And yeah, thankfully, most of them were, were were black shoes, so I could just turn them black and white. <laughs> but it worked out really nicely, and they were happy with them. And then uh, I had a mentor, uh, Brent Billings, who uh, was a part of my church at the time, and uh, he was helping me to learn the more technical aspects of photography. And then he also mentored me for weddings. We would do some second shooting together and um, got my first paid wedding at 14 as well, and just kind of took off from that that realm as well. Well, gosh, how, how come or, you know, why maybe didn't that bug catch you even harder when you were having success at such a young age doing that? Um, what, what took your attention away from photography? Well, I don't like sitting around and, and uh, photography is a very seasonal business where I live here in northern Idaho. Uh, we're really busy in the summer, but uh, the rest of the year it's pretty slow. And I guess that also kind of falls into detailing a little bit, too. But I just kind of found that passion for uh, more working with my hands and everything too. And, um, still have a lot of success in photography. I, I'm still busy with that too, but, um, really just liked the kind of change in pace with, with, uh, doing detail work. And it was nice to, uh, kind of fill in the gaps in the schedule with uh, photography as well. Yeah. And I bet having that skill set really helps you in, in your marketing efforts in the detailing side. Um, kind of how do you look at the at the cars that you're taking pictures of for your own social media and stuff? And like, like maybe and usually this is about you. But do you have any tips for the other guys out there who are watching that would just be something simple that you see that they're messing up on all the time? Yeah. Clean your lens. <laughs> That's a, that's a really big one. Uh, you know, the, the camera really doesn't matter so much as what you put in front of it and the lighting that's on that thing that's on it, that's in front of it. So, you know, you can use your cell phone, your uh, cameras have come a long ways these days. Just clean the lens, uh, set up on a tripod. I just found an app recently um, for uh, iPhone and it's called Lens Buddy. And uh, what I really like about it is I can set my camera, my phone up on a tripod and I can wear my AirPods and it's got a countdown. So I can set up to take a photo every 10 seconds and but it has an auto, audio countdown. So I know when to make sure I'm smiling or posed in the right spot. So um, I just took photos of doing a PPF job and I got some comments saying, wow, those are really incredible photos. And really they were just my phone sitting on a tripod but I uh, didn't have to pay attention to it as much. And then uh, lighting is the other thing. So. Um, making sure your lighting is nice and using quality light is important too. Um, it's been seeing a lot of uh, popularity with some of the light painting photos I've been doing lately. So after I finish a high-end job, I'll set a camera on a tripod and I just have a little video light, it's a little stick light, um, probably a $90 light, nothing fancy, but I set the exposure to 30 seconds and I go through and I wave the light around the car and uh, it records it like a streak. So that's been a cool way to get some more unique and interesting shots too um, for the final finished shiny car photo. But um, overall, just thinking about your lighting, thinking about your composition, you can go on YouTube and you can find some of the uh, basics about that stuff. But um, overall, think less about the gear that you have and more about what you're doing with the gear. A good photographer can take a 
10 year old camera and make a photo that looks incredible or a person that doesn't have any experience can take a $20,000 camera and take a terrible photo, you know? So it really just depends on how you're using the equipment that you have. And same with detailing, you know, you really don't need anything super fancy to be able to get quality results. It's more about how you use it. Yeah. Funny how humans, like we all have whatever hobby or whatever we're into, whether it's, a, you know, going to a rodeo or, or racing cars or photography. Um, and then you just really absorb into it and have to have all of the, all of the toys and the gears. And really the professionals like yourself can do something just as even better than somebody with a high end gear with, with a telephone. That's crazy. Good stuff. Good stuff. Okay. You went to uh, Western Governors University. What did you go to school for? Is that anything that's playing into your career now? So I studied business uh, when I went to school. Uh, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart. I, when I work for other people, I, I tend to not, not get along too well. I tend to just want to execute on new ideas that I have. But So I studied business uh, primarily for photography initially. Uh, to run that business better. But I think business is a really fantastic thing to study, whether you self-study or you go to college for it. Um, I went to school just primarily to have that degree in case I ever needed it for some reason. But uh, Western Governors University was a great fit for me. Um, I started off at a local uh, state university and then left and um, went to WGU later on. But what I really like about WGU is that it's all self-paced and you can go faster if you prefer that. And it's all competency based too. So if you already have experience with a topic, say business operations, um, you can quickly move through that class once you prove the knowledge that you that you have. And uh, it's a really nice uh, fit for that. So I have a master's of business management leadership and my, uh, my bachelor's is also in business administration. Holy macaroni. You got master's degrees. In, okay. So uh, th- what's really heartwarming about that is there are so many people in your boat that have a master's degree that that are coming from corporate America with really high-end jobs to run detail shops. And, you know, with the implementation of ceramic coatings and paint protection film, absolutely, this is a viable business. Um, tell me a little bit about what the aha moment was for you when you decided after doing that first detail and like actually being detailed with toothbrushes in the vents and then getting into photography, going to school. What was the moment that you said, Hey, I'm going to make a business doing this and chose this for your career path. Well, I've been doing uh, detailing on the side for like the last seven years or so. And really it just started with, uh, getting inspired by Larry Cosello with ammo NYC and then, uh, buy my first polisher. But I really just fell in love with, paint correction primarily and the difference in results that you could get with that. Um, I didn't really start pursuing it as a serious business until a couple years ago. Um, I got uh, laid off from my uh, day job and uh, I was running a marketing agency as their CEO and uh, really enjoyed the people there. But um, I was more out of uh, just a need to make an income that I went full time with it. So Um, I really decided to niche down and really focus on the higher end market of detailing. And then when I came on to Owner's Pride, it really helped me to um, carry a higher end product that people can't just get on Amazon um, that has an actual warranty with it. Um, Some people don't know this, but a lot of warranties that are advertised, they aren't true warranties. Uh, Meaning if like if that shop closed down, for instance, they customer typically wouldn't be able to get service or um, or they're required to come back for annual maintenance. Um, but uh, with owner's pride, that's, that's not true. So owner's pride, they're, they're not required to have any annual maintenance visits. They're taken care of. So if I decide to go live in Bali again, like I did in 2019, my customers can get taken care of uh, with no problem. So it's really a great peace of mind for both myself. So I can make sure that what I'm selling is, is a, is a good product that can uh, stand the test of time and for my customers that uh, they can get taken care of whether they, whether they live here or if they move across the country, um, their vehicle will still be looking great for years. And that's really important to me, but uh, focusing on the, the higher end side of uh, ceramic coatings, especially has uh, been a really big difference for me in my business uh, to make it more of a viable business. Yeah. Gosh, what, what really 
great advantages that you have with your business degree, with the photography, and with the marketing background. Um, what I see so many of these marketing companies that reach out to the detailers, and I feel that a lot of them are pretty nefarious in their intentions of just taking people's money. And the people to which I'm referring are the ones who are like, we're going to 10x your business in 10 days. You're going to have 10 million Lamborghinis in $10 million. And re realistically, that's just kind of not how it works. You have to put in the work and, and get it. So w with marketing, how do you see having the knowledge that you have from being in marketing plays to your advantage as a company. And do you still have to reach outside of your own company to get marketing or do you do all of that yourself? Yeah. So I really focused, um, when I branded as, as Glanzen, um, in 2020, uh, 2021, actually, sorry. Um, I really wanted to focus on the marketing side and the branding side. So the first thing I did was I hired a quality graphic designer to build my brand. So I used uh, Jeremy Ellsworth and they do fantastic branding. Um, super thrilled with their work. And um, that's where I got this current brand. And then I had, uh, also focused on a really quality website. I actually built it myself the first time and I'm um, having detailers roadmap uh, build me a next one actually. So really excited for that. And um, there's a lot of things with marketing that you can do yourself. Um, for example, Facebook and Google ads, you can absolutely do it yourself, but you need to take the time to learn the strategy for it, learn what you shouldn't do. I also, I often see a lot of people running ads for that. Um, they don't even pay attention. They're targeting, they just leave everything on automatic. So I'll be getting ads for somebody that's across the country from me and they're just wasting their ad budget. So, you know, it's important to know how to set things up properly. Um, so definitely be educated on that. But if you, if it's not your thing or if it's uh, a little bit outside of your realm or too complicated, definitely consider hiring somebody, but find somebody reputable that uh, other people have had a good experience with that um, are outside of who's marketing what. So um, as far as what I currently use for myself, um, I, I outsource my graphic design. I outsource my website now. And uh, that's really just to take things off my plate and uh, let the experts handle it. So um, I'm, my current website was looks nice, but uh, I've had trouble with people actually converting on it. So that's one thing that I just that I haven't wanted to dedicate the time into. So I'm hiring that out. But overall, you can learn a lot of this stuff on your own. And uh, my degrees really have nothing to do with uh, my success in this. This is all just uh, really digging down and learning and deep diving online. Um, really, anybody can be successful if they really try to focus as, on it as a business. I think the biggest uh, mistake that detailers make is, is uh, just starting out detailing without having any plan for your business of where it's going or how you want to get there or having mentors in the industry or outside the industry that can help you get there as well. Yeah, I absolutely 100% agree with you. And that's why we got certified through Mike McCallowitz Fix This Next Business Coaching. And we work with a lot of the guys that are in our network. Um, and and the, the business acumen is really very, very lacking. Um, but what a great advantage for you. So I, I would imagine that being from a marketing background, you've really dialed in who your customer is and you didn't really go as, as an approach of doing all detailing cleaning up dog poop out of a car and baby vomit and this and that you kind of went into this with the higher end things of paint protection film and ceramic coatings can you tell me a little bit about who your your avatar is or your your customer specifically and how um how you present to them what you offer yeah, it's actually funny you mentioned dog poop because I have a customer who's been with me for several years. She's a, she's a dog trainer, and I have literally cleaned dog poop out of her seatbelts before, but not not the kind of job that I focus on. Um, so my target client is someone that's thirty to seventy years old, um, who is in a middle to higher end income, who dr uh, drives a newer vehicle, I'd say within five years uh, old that appreciates quality over over speed and over uh, price. So, you know, the, the uh, products that I use and the processes that I use, it's not fast, but it is quality. Um, you know, we, we invest in products that are more high end so that 
uh, our customers can have safe uh, cleaning on their vehicle. Um, you know, if you go to a dealership, uh, chances are pretty high that they're just going to acid wash your car. It's going to look awesome. They're going to get all the water spots off and they're probably just going to put a co quick coat of wax on there. And uh, it'll look great for a couple weeks until you wash it a few times. And then it's going to look, look like heck again, you know. And, uh, you know, if that's, if you're looking for something low budget and all you care about is getting it spruced up quickly, then maybe it's the right fit for you. We here try to focus on protecting vehicles from the elements and uh, creating a long lasting shine, long lasting protection. And we focus on people who value quality um, because we're certainly not the lowest price in town and we don't, we don't try to be. We try to um, focus on providing quality product and we only do one or two cars a day. We're not rushing them through like some other shops are. So um, our, our, our ideal customer really values that that relationship service. And we also offer Tesla rentals to our customers as well, which is our only shopping area doing that. So with our five year and seven year ceramic coatings, you can get a free Tesla to drive while your car's in service. And with our other services, um, ends up running about $75 a day. And that's the lowest we can charge for it. We'd run it through Turo. Uh, it just makes it a lot easier for everybody involved. And it's a cool little perk that our customers really love. So tell me a little bit about your shop specifically, um, the size of the shop and how many employees you have and kind of just, you know, the overall feel of where you are right now. Yeah. So currently I work from home. Um, I've got a home-based shop and it's a uh, smaller, I've got, uh, I've got one single bay and it's a large, large bay. And, uh, it's the primary focus is ceramic coatings, uh, paint protection film. And then we're starting to offer window tinting as well. But uh, it's all focused around that. And then I've also got a wash bay next to it. Um, so I've got a spotless wash over there uh, for quick and easy processes. And then I'm actually building out a whole whole mechanical room system to run central vacuums and everything too. But uh, currently it's just me. I'm looking to bring on a part-time helper, to, particularly with the media production. Um, as a photographer, it really kills me to just take cell phone photos all the time. So I'd love to bring somebody in and train them up on making some cool content for us so that we can uh, help to up our social media game a little bit and our website photos. And so as you're doing the work, it's kind of hard to uh, take interesting photos of yourself uh, as it always could be a little bit better if you have someone behind the camera. Absolutely. Absolutely. So where do you, where, let's break out the crystal ball and look into it. What's your big, hairy, audacious goal with this business? Where do you see yourself in five, 10, you know, in the, in the big picture, the long run with your business? Yeah. So I'd love to move to a commercial location within the next year or two. I've got a, I've got one uh, potentially that may be coming up in uh, the fall. So that's really nice, but I'd love to uh, get one or two employees uh, on board as well to help with uh, more of the preparation side of things, a little bit more of the detailing side. And uh, I'd like to focus on content creation and uh, ceramic coatings primarily. That'd be, that'd be ideal for us. And um Eventually, I may even uh, like to sell the business and uh, move move a abroad again. I lived abroad for three months in Southeast Asia and absolutely loved it. So that's one of my goals too, to either uh, potentially sell in the future or to, um, or to just own it and uh, manage it from afar. Okay. So Glanzen or Glanzen and Lightholt, I'm feeling pretty German here with this whole thing. Um, tell me a little bit about how you came up with this name and, and what that means to you. Well, I do have some German heritage. I'm a quarter German and um, Germans are known for precision in their manufacturing and, and what they do. So I actually really wanted to choose a German word. And I actually found the name Glanzen uh, probably six, seven years ago. And found found the domain, didn't buy it, and uh, just kind of waited. And I really wanted the umlauts over the A for a little bit of a German feel to it. But uh, eventually, in 2021, I registered the business as an LLC and bought the domain and branded it as that. And uh, so I pronounce it as Glanzen, um, but I was corrected by a German speaker. It's pronounced Glenzen. So I'm really not kind of torn on what I want to do now because I uh, I feel like Glanzen's a little bit easy to uh, 
a little bit easier to understand for the average American speaker, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. We, well, it also, so it, <laughs> we play we play soccer, not football here. So I, yeah, <laughs> so it, it loosely translates to shiny in German. Okay. Well, and you know what? It makes a ton of sense. Um, probably in my de days of detailing, Mercedes and BMWs and Audis uh, with Mercedes and BMW probably were the two most cars that I ever, ever saw. You know, that's that customer is our very much target market. Um, so say this, wake up, you wake up in the morning. I want you to describe to me an ideal, beautiful day of detail business for you. Yeah, so um, I love to work on Teslas. I really specialize in them. Um, I'm actually the only person, uh, only outside company that works with uh, our local Tesla showroom service center for vehicle reconditioning. So that's super cool. And so ideal day for me is um, doing a ceramic coating on a brand new Tesla. Uh, absolutely love that. So as far as a uh, wake up to to sundown, I love to get my coffee every morning. It's a local espresso stand down the street that I frequent and uh, love to get some of that going. And uh, I really just love ceramic coatings. They're got a lot of value to them. This car looks amazing afterwards and it keeps looking awesome. I just had a customer call me today and she said, after I washed my car, it looks like a diamond and everybody is asking me how, how it's so shiny and uh, I've been handing out your cards left and right, and I'm just so thrilled with it. And she bought one of our seven-year owner Sprite coatings, and um, it's just been really fantastic. Brand new white Cadillac, and uh, I can tell she really loves her car. But it's really about providing that customer experience and seeing their reaction afterwards is what's the biggest value for me and what I do. And then, conversely, can you tell me about... And we've all had mistakes and accidents and problems. Can you tell me about some kind of a situation that you've had to go through in your business that you've taken away a lesson from? Hmm. Well, I have a black Tesla Model 3, and Tesla paint is known to be quite thin. And uh, early on, when I was in my polishing career, I burnt through some paint on it, on, on the edge. And uh, thankfully, it was my own car. But uh, I learned a, little, learned a lesson from that, that uh, Tesla paint is quite poor. And even though I was measuring it, uh, it must have been extra thin in that corner. But uh, that was, the, I think, the biggest mistake that I've made as far as on a vehicle. Thankfully, I've, I really take a lot of care, and I haven't had any uh, major mistakes that I've made with customers. Um, I feel like one of the biz big biggest business mistakes I made is just not focusing on branding and marketing early on. I was kind of a little bit cheaping out a little bit, but, um, you know, over the last few years, I've really just buckled down into making it a serious business. Uh, I got a CRM system, uh, with Orbis X and absolutely love them. Uh, my customers are really impressed with how professional the estimates come through. And, um, I see a lot of detailers in the industry that are looking at different systems and, sometimes the price point's a, a challenge for them. And, you know, I really think that having an organized business, even as a single operator, it can really make a big, huge difference in the first impression people get with working with you and really help set that tone going forward. I've got really awesome customers. Um, they aren't picky. Um, they're just super easy to work with. And I've got some other peers in my local area that I talk to and, and the customers, sometimes they, uh, they like tell me stories and it's really sad to just see how, uh, how picky some people can be or how challenging some customers can be. But I think when you find the right niche and you find the right, um, price point for things and you find the right service that you can offer the, you get some really great customers in there. And I think just kind of being picky with who you work with is important too. I've turned down lots of, uh, jobs that uh, I just don't have a good feeling on and, um, that's okay. You know, there's other people that can serve those customers. And um, I really want to work with people that uh, are interested in taking care of their car and uh, really value the services that we provide. 
constant. And I think, you know, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when something's going to happen. It's really about how you handle that situation. Um, luckily, the customer whose car you burned the paint on was very kind to you <laughs> because it was you. <laughs> Okay, um, so thinking of resources and things that we look at um, to continue learning, because learning is an ongoing thing where you're always, always, always want to keep learning and, and getting more knowledge. What kind of resources do you lean into, be it books or podcasts or, or YouTube or classes um, that are helping you keep leveling up in your business? I love listening to podcasts while I work, so... I listen to a lot of business podcasts. I listen to detailing podcasts. I listen to owner's pride podcast. I listen to detailers roadmap. That's another great one. Um, really love uh, watching YouTube. So Larry Kosilla with the Amazon NYC is a really big favorite channel of mine. He's got a lot of great educational tips on there. Um, I go to trainings. So I, I went to a window tinting class with Matt Blackmer in Detroit Tint Studio last year. And then I'm actually headed back to Detroit next month to do a class with Rupes for uh, wet sanding and paint correction uh, on the more advanced side. And then um, also doing a uh, another training for um, uh, some more of a corrosion resistance product as well. So should be really cool and I'm super excited for it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And okay, and what do you do in your free time when you're not detailing cars? I love to travel, so I'm just a travel addict. I have a hobby of uh, what we call travel hacking or credit card points. And so I love having a business because I can run all my purchases through rewards credit cards. And so I love uh, finding the best cards uh, for my particular situation and helping other people do so as well and uh, going to some really cool places. All my friends said they love, love, to, love to live vicariously through me. And I'm always telling them, hey, just come along and, and uh, travel as well because it's uh, very affordable to do and uh, it really helps open up your mind to new things and you can learn a lot through travel as well. That is excellent, excellent. I love the using the credit cards. As long as you're paying them off every month, you sure can do well with the points. It's those... Uh, 90 some percent of people who don't pay off that balance every month that it doesn't really do anything for. All right. Well, man, you, I, I really like everything about your business, your background, where you came from, your degrees, your travel. It's just all, all good stuff. And I'm so glad that you're on Team Owner's Pride. We appreciate the heck out of everything you're doing. Um, we get that uh, new Owner's Pride paint protection film in your hands to play with here. And, um, and we'll just keep moving up, up and away. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to join me on the Owner's Pride podcast. If anybody wants to find you, how do they find you? Uh, Facebook, at Glanzen uh, Paint Protection Film and Ceramic Coatings is a great one. Glanzen Detailing on Instagram. Uh, those are two great ones. And always happy to help you with your traveling too, if you so desire. Um, love helping coach people on that. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to hang out with us here on the Owner's Pride Podcast. If you found value in what we were putting out, please take a moment and hit the like and subscribe button. If you're more interested in listening to it instead of watching, then we're available everywhere for audio podcast. And if you use code ECOWASHTHEWORLD at checkout on ownerspride.com, you're going to get 10% off of your order. Again, thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to hang out with us here. Without you, it would just be me talking to myself. Until next time, stay glossy.